guys, how we doing? I want to talk to you about something that I've wanted to talk to you about for a while. I've uh, been a little nervous too, to be honest, <laughs> but uh, I think now's the time. Now's the time in our relationship that I can talk to you about what I want to talk to you about. I want to tell you about what I do for a living. I love it. It's so cool. Some of you guys are going to think it's really lame. Others of you are going to think, Justin, that's really cool. That's fun, right? The most important thing about what I do for a living is it provides for my family. Those two cute little kids that I have at home and the lovely wife that I have. That's the most important thing about my job is that it feeds them and keeps them clothed and that's pretty important to me. It's extremely important to me. But right up there with that is is what we do and it's 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 really important stuff and I love it. You know, I, I, I moved from Las Vegas in April to take this job and you know that because you've been watching us for a while. Um, I was hired as the CEO of a company. And uh, see, before this, I've worked for myself as a business consultant for five years or so. And it's been good. It's been really good to us. Uh, but this opportunity came up, and so I thought, you know what? I'm going to move my family across the country, that way across the country. Not that way, but up that, never mind, north across. What is happening right now? And I'm going to take the job as the CEO of this company. The company provides emergency preparedness products. Oh, you thought I did something cooler than that. No, it's really cool actually. Emergency preparedness products uh, to people who want to be prepared, essentially. So like, you know, Hurricane Sandy, we had a lot of customers who used our products during Hurricane Sandy. And afterwards they called us and said, hey, thank you for the 72 hour kit or for the food or whatever it is they bought from us. Uh, because it fed them, it kept them warm, it, it protected their family. And, and like I said before, family is everything to me. So, you know, I, I take what I do uh, every day very, very, very seriously. Because when the storms of life hit, either the figurative storms or the literal storms, it's important that we're prepared. And so we do what we do and we take it extremely seriously. I can't stress that enough. So the way it works is we don't sell directly to the public. We have about 5,500 authorized retailers or authorized resellers throughout the world and they sell our products to the public. So we work directly with distributors who distribute our products. I kind of broke down one of the kits that we have, but I mean, it, each kit comes with, depending on the type of kit, but like this kit here, ugh, this, oh, that's a two person kit. It has the food and water necessary for two people to survive for a period of time. We've got all sorts of kit, we, kits. We have classic room lockdown kits like this. You know, this is a toilet seat and it has a bunch of food, water, stuff like that for a classroom in case it were to get locked down for a period of time. And uh, and again, this isn't a sales pitch to you. And I, I'm, I was worried about talking about this because I don't want you guys thinking Justin's trying to sell you some stuff because I can't sell it to the public anyway. So it works out well, right? We only sell to authorized resellers. And so this works out well. I feel comfortable talking to you about this stuff because it's not like I'm trying to sell it to you, right? You get that? Okay, cool, cool. Because if someone went to our website and tried to buy stuff, they can't. They have to go to an authorized distributor. Does that make sense? Okay. So, like we have these uh, classroom lockdown kits and these kits have everything you need in case, you know, I remember in school once our classroom was locked down because there was a hostage situation down the street, or a drug bust or something down the street a little ways. Sometimes classrooms are locked down because there's a gas leak in the area. Whatever reason it is, these reasons are becoming more and more uh, common. So classroom lockdown kits, we'll have school districts buy truckloads of these kits. Food, water, um, all sorts of stuff. A tarp, um, radio, uh, air freshener, tape, I mean just all sorts of stuff. And we have a few different kits like that. We have an auto kit, you know. This has uh, fix a flat, jumper cables, all sorts of stuff that you keep in your car in case of emergency. We have freeze dried food like this. It's delicious stuff and it's freeze dried deliciousness. You know, you have stuff like this, wind up uh, radio, flashlight, like these sleeping bags and just all sorts of stuff to help you prepare in case of emergency. And our website has a bunch of stuff on it. And you, you're welcome to check it out. I think this is really cool. So there's two types of water. There's these water pouches, right? It's like a... Remember the Capri Sun pouch when you were a kid? And you had to put the straw at the bottom, not the top. Remember that? You did that. I know you did. Well, these are just water pouches like that. But you tear off the top and drink the water. 
It's four ounces right there. And the cool part about it is, if you step on this, it won't break. If I give it all my weight, well that's about half my weight. So if you give it a fair amount of weight, it won't break at all, which is really cool. But we also do water boxes. It's like a juice box, but with water in it. Kind of cool. And then we have food, like the freeze-dried food I told you, but we also sell this stuff. It's kind of cool. It's a food bar, emergency food bar. And the shelf life on, on the food, depending on the food item, is anywhere from 5 to 25 years. So it lasts a really long time. And it's a lot of fun. I wanted to tell you what I did. Hopefully you're proud of me. Hope so. If not... I'm sorry, but I love it. It's so important, so special, so great. You know, I talk to the warehouse guys all the time about putting these kits together. And I say, look, you know, if someone buys a you know, two-person kit for us, we need to make sure we don't miss anything in the kit. Because if they're depending on food and water to be there, they're not going to check, right? They're just going to throw in their car and, and count on the fact that we did our job right. If they're depending on an emergency sleeping bag, to, want to keep their, you know, baby Zoe and baby Johnny warm. It has to be there. We can't make mistakes in what we do. And it's very important that we, we are 100% accurate. If you're stuck in a snowstorm with your two little kids, you're going to count on our survival kits to keep you alive until help can arrive. And that's the thing, too, is with, with disasters like Sandy or Katrina or whatever other disaster that's happened or fire or whatever it is that happens, help will arrive, but it usually takes 72 hours or more for help to, to be in full effect and full force. Uh, you can count on the government to come and help, but it takes a while. It takes a while. Just watch the news. Next time a disaster hits, it takes a while. So, you know, a lot of preparedness companies sell things that, that would be, you know, for the prepper, right? Like like uh, underground bunkers or things like that. We do more of the everyday stuff, the day-to-day -day use stuff, food, water, light, communication, shelter, stuff like that. And, and we have a lot of resellers who are you know, preppers or, or some who are preparing for a zombie apocalypse or other people who just want to prepare their family. Uh, we have schools who buy bucket kits from us. We have offices who buy these bucket kits from us that have the toilet seats. We have church groups and all sorts of people that buy from us. There's just over 5,500 resellers. So you can just imagine the type of people that buy from us. I mean, we have everything from the everyday folks who are preparing in case of a job loss. So they'll buy a bunch of food storage in case someone loses their job. Or you have the people who are preparing for a zombie apocalypse or the world to end in 2012 or whatever else you can imagine. Uh, but it's a, lot of, it's a lot of fun. I love it. I feel very fortunate and very blessed to have this opportunity and it's a good time. So we have that and then we also have like seeds for long-term preparedness to grow fruits and vegetables and herbs and stuff. And the cool thing about Boise is we've gotten a lot of attention from like the news media here. I'm gonna put some links below. Give it a read through if you'd like. Just, they've welcomed us here, just excited that we're here. I, it's, it's so cool, it's so cool. So that's what I do. I hope I didn't disappoint you. It's a lot of fun. I love it. So in the coming weeks, it might make a little more sense why I'm talking to you about this. Um, but for now, just know this is what I do. I love it. And uh, it's a blast. It's great stuff. And we're, so we're in a temporary facility right now. We'll be moving into our permanent facility uh, in a few weeks. So when we're in the permanent facility, I might show you around, introduce you to some people. Would that be fun? Would you like to get to know the situation here? It's a blast, and I love it. And I feel very fortunate. I think I've already said that. So the company has been around for about eight years. It has, like I said, 5,500 resellers. It's multinational. We, we do most of our business in North America, but we have a lot of resellers in South America, New Zealand, Australia, a few in Europe, uh, and it's, it's wonderful. So there you have it. This is where I work. This is what I do. Again, we're in a temporary space right now uh, because they've moved everything from... Uh, various places to Boise. Uh, the company's pretty new here, uh, but we'll be in our permanent facility, like I said, in a couple weeks. And when that time happens, I'll talk to everyone around here and, and see if they're okay with me throwing my camera around. But that's what I get when the boss man is, is you know, on YouTube and stuff. So, so what do they expect? Of course, I'm gonna have a camera on me, right? 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 
But it's a lot of fun. I surely enjoy it. And I should cook some of these and try them sometime. I mean, I've done, and show you guys, show you what it tastes like. I should eat this and film myself eating this so you know what it tastes like. That doesn't tell you what it tastes like. It's good stuff, but I, I should make it anyways. Like if Cassie wants me to make dinner, I should be like, okay, I'll make cheesy lasagna, and then just throw hot water in it, and be like, here you go, it's delicious. And it is delicious. Cassie's picking me up, so I have to walk over to the car. See you, buddy. Um, Christmas lights all around, I love this. Remember the Christmas tree lighting we did the other day? Well, we didn't do it, we went to it. Well, actually we did one yesterday at our house, remember that? We did the countdown for it. Anyways, the one we did two days ago, I'm losing track of time. That's just down the street a little bit. It was awesome. I loved it. Oh, but the Christmas lights. Oh, look, look. And then across, they don't have the one across the street on yet, but but uh, over the street they've got lights too. It's cool. I wanted to tell you about it, Kay. It's really cool. It's police activity in front of the Capitol. Someone's going to jail tonight. All right. There she is. There's my ride. Yes. Thank you for picking me up. You're welcome. Try to get in the car by yourself holding the camera. Sorry? Try to get in the car by yourself holding the camera. Well, I gotta undress. Just try it. Can't do it. Not Can't really undress, it. but just... So I, uh, Disrobe. I brought them to work today. D-jacket. I brought <gasps> them to work. You guys got to go to work? Was it awesome? Hold on, number 22 is texting me. And I kept saying, the reason I go to work is for these guys. Because before I had kids, I never worked. Just kidding, I worked. No, you never did. These two. Love you. Oh, he loves me. Love you. Love you. Oh, she loves me too. Wow, what a lucky guy. You get to work and enjoy your children. What's up? I said, what a lucky guy. You get to work and enjoy your children. I know, and oh. What a day. And then you brought me bread. <laughs> From the bakery across the street. My mom's friend's son works there. And he gave her bread. Your mom's friend's son? Because yeah. your friend's brother works there. Yeah, it's the same person. Uh. <laughs> How's work? It was good. It was good. How was work for you? Well, I just, I didn't show them anyone. I didn't introduce them to anyone. I will soon. But we just, I showed them some products and kind of explain what I do. And I think it's fun. I love it. I love what I do. It's really cool. Is that why you're shouting at me? <laughs> Sorry. And I think it's fun. <laughs> Sorry. Let's go eat some food. Mm. Hang out. Mm. Put the kids to bed. Oh. And then immediately go to sleep. No, I hate that. <laughs> I hate those days. I hate those days. I need like some non-work time in my day. Just I doing know. other stuff. I know. I'll stay up till midnight being exhausted just because I need more, I need variety in my day. <laughs> That's what I do. I stay awake for an hour after the kids go to bed and then I'm quickly asleep. And I'm like, Cassie, don't fall asleep. Don't, I, I need to hang out with you. I need to hang out with you, Cassie. I need to hang out with you. She's like, must. But, sleep. but they, they, um, want my attention even in the middle of the night. So that's. If, if if I got that eight hour break, it'd be a different story. Stay up till midnight. Party the night away. Nope, just kidding. You're pretty. Oh gosh. So there you have it. I'm home. Home sweet home. With my family. Cassie turned on, yeah buddy? What? What is that? Isn't that the abominable snowman, I think, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, pretty cool. Cassie threw it on the fire, which is nice. Fire! Fire! Fact. Fact. I've never lived anywhere with a fire like this. This is like my dream come true. I've never had this. <gasps> my wife just said this is her dream come true, and that's a big moment for me. No, that's really special to me. I'm really happy about that. Why is this your dream come true? It's cold. I... I... I have my own fireplace. We're in Boise for the winter. Our house is decorated for Christmas. And we're about to eat a delicious meal. And our kids are both happy. Uh, and healthy. It's perfect. Bunch Santa You found Santa Claus? Wait, what do you want for Christmas? A bunch Santa Claus. You want to punch Santa Claus? The, Santa if you Santa punch Santa Claus, Santa Claus you won't get you. anything. Yeah. What do you want for Christmas? Um, that robot. 
When we ask him, he says he wants a zebra. He wants a zebra for Christmas. A toy zebra, not a real one even. Uh, what I want to show you is what she's making for dinner. Oh, uh, what do we have here, Cass? Zucchini and carrots? Are we doing Meatless Monday? I read something that, that said California is encouraging people to... Maybe it's a city in California? I don't know. Someone tell me. I think... Somewhere in California, they're encouraging people to do Meatless Monday, which I think is a great idea. I like meat, but I don't think you need it every day. I know you don't need it every day. So there you have it. I love what I do for a living. Work with great people. I love... I love my fam. Things are good. Yes. She'll only kiss me when the camera's on. Oh! Baby Johnny said, hug, hug. I love you, buddy. Love you. This reminds me of the most inspirational, one of the most inspirational speeches I've ever heard in my life. And it's a commencement speech done by Conan O'Brien. I don't remember what school it was, but I'll put the link below if you haven't seen it. The last five or ten minutes are phenomenal. Remember Conan was going to take over Jay Leno's spot, and then when it came down to it, he didn't get it. And he'd been working for that his entire life his entire adult life. So everything he had worked for and all his dreams were shattered in an instant. And uh, he, he said that, you know, what you, what you do as a job shouldn't define you as a person. And, and no matter what, you know, I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna quote him. Go watch the video, it's phenomenal. And uh, hopefully it'll inspire you like it inspired me. And he just says, look, don't let what you do to feed your family define who you are. If you're a janitor or if you're a movie star or if you're even Conan O'Brien, don't let that define you. And, and the thing Cassie and I have learned is life comes in seasons. It seems like every few years things change and, and you grow or you have, you have a major loss or something. Things are constantly changing. So, you know, it's important to be prepared and to have a good support system because you never know when the snowmen of life are going to punch you in the face. <laughs> he threw a snowman at me. So, there you have it. Thanks for watching. See you next time.